Hi guys, so here's section 10.4, which is solving e quadratic equations, this time by factoring. So I, I introduced all of this with 10.3, but really quickly, standard form, make sure you make it equal to zero. Uh, solutions can also be called x-intercepts, roots, or zeros. So again, we're looking for the x-intercepts. We are skipping solve by graphing, but make sure you know that you have two solutions if it crosses twice, one solution if it just touches it, or no solution if it never touches the x-axis. Uh, we did solve by using square roots if there's no middle term, if there's no bx, and there's just the a x squared and the c, you can solve by square roots. But if there is a bx, you cannot do it that way. You have to go by either factoring, completing the square quadratic, and we're skipping this one. So today we're doing solving by factoring. And we were pretty good at factoring already. So Hopefully, we're good at factory. So here's a couple of problems for you. Um, let me change this light. So the first thing you need to know is the zero product property. Okay. So the zero product property, I have it listed here for you guys. If x times y equals zero, then either x has to equal zero or y has to equal zero. One of these two have to equal to zero. Okay, in order for it to equal to zero. So if I have x plus 2 times x minus 3 equals zero, either the x plus 2 has to equal to zero or the x minus 3 has to equal to zero. Excuse me. One or both of them have to equal to zero. So I color coded it for you so hopefully you can kind of catch that um, where I did it. And all you do is you solve it down and you make minus 2 here. So x could equal to negative 2 and that would make this zero because if this was negative 2, that would make zero times whatever that is. Or, if I added 3 to this side, x could equal to 3, and that would make this side 0, so it doesn't matter what that is, if either one of them. So your answer would be negative 2 or 3. So if I gave you this equation here, x mi minus 8 times the quantity 2x plus 7 equals 0, all you do is split it and set them both equal to 0. So you write x minus 8 is equal to 0, 2x plus 7 is equal to 0 and you solve each one individually. Plus 8 to both sides, plus 8 to both sides, x is equal to 8, or in this side you have to do a little more work, and you get 2x is equal to negative 7, divide by 2, x is equal to negative 7 over 2. So there's your two answers, which means it would cross twice. You'd have two answers um, because they have two solutions or two roots, two x-intercepts. Okay, um, that's if they give it to you in factored form already. If they give it to you as a quadratic equation like this, where it's in a um, quadratic trinomial equal to zero, you need to factor it yourself. So you should know by now that this would be x plus 2, x plus 5, and make it equal to zero. Make, make sure you write the equal to zero when you factor it down. Keep it going to equal zero. Split it so it becomes x plus 2 equals zero, x plus 5 equals zero, minus 2 from both sides, x is equal to negative 2, minus 5 from both sides, x is equal to negative 5. So your answer is, what this is saying is if you put a negative 2 into this here, this that would make this left side equal to zero. If you put a negative 5 over here, that would also make it equal to zero. Okay, that's your solutions or your roots or your x-intercepts. Notice we're solving for x. Over here, um, you can see I tried to make you notice it's equal to 5. So you should have minus 5 from both sides. So then you get x squared minus 4x minus 5 is equal to 0. Because we want, again, make it equal to 0. And now we need to do a little bit of factoring. And I know it's going to be a plus and a minus since it's a negative 5. And I want the minus to be bigger, so it's minus 5 plus 1 because I want a negative 4 sum. Split this, x plus 1 equals 0, x minus 5 is equal to 0, minus 1 from both, so x is equal to negative 1, plus 5 to both sides, x is equal to 5. So you have, there's your two answers, negative 1 or 5. Okay, here's a little... Um, I'm trying to make this one a little more obvious that you need to move them around. So you need to change it to standard form, then solve. So I'm going to add 9x squared to both sides to make 
to make it into standard form. And I get 9x squared plus 12x plus 4 is equal to 0. And I want to do this. And if you notice, it is a special case. I have a perfect square here, a perfect square here. So if I try it, and let's see if it works. Um, 3x plus 2 times 3x plus 2. It does equal to this, because 9x squared plus 6x plus 6x is my 12x. And plus 4 is equal to 0. So really, I only need to solve it once. Or you could, if you wanted to do it, just go 3x plus 2 squared equals 0. So just make 3x plus 2 equals to 0. So you could go that way, or you could just write it once and say 3x plus 2 is equal to 0 minus 2. 3x is equal to negative 2 divided by 3. x is equal to negative 2 thirds, and that's your answer. So you actually only have one solution. If you only have one solution, graphically, that would say that if this was 0 and this was 1, at negative 2 thirds, that's where the parabola would just skim off of the x-axis. Okay, if this was your x-axis here, this is y. Um, here's another one, a little bit more tricky. So I need to minus 2a squared from both sides. I'm also going to add 2a at the same time. And I'm going to just save time and put plus 9, plus 9 down here. So these are all gone. And now I just do it here. So I get a squared plus 6a plus 9 is equal to 0. And again, you should notice that this is a perfect square trinomial. Oops, that's a 0. And a plus 3, a plus 3. So a plus 3 is equal to 0 minus 3. a is equal to negative 3. So they might use a different variable on you. And you just solve for whatever variable they give. Okay, that is section 10.4, which is solving by the quadratic, I mean, sorry, solving by factoring.